Hey there everybody, it's RCK, and I'm glad to have you back here again today. Um, of course, as you can already tell, we're going to be, this is going to be a Dominions 5 video, and we're going to be going over M.A. Ermor, which is a nation that I really, really enjoy, and I always have. Um, other than that, um, not too much going on in this video. I'll do a separate video for the expansion, the god, my views on it. And honestly enough, this is the nation that brought me into the game. Um, not particularly saying, oh, I, I came in playing this nation. No, I did not get my first win. I didn't even play this nation for a long time, actually, because I wanted to get it just right. But I'm meaning a long, long time ago, um, whenever Dominions 4 was a thing, I, uh, I watched, uh, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, and of course I watched Lucid Tactics, um, uh, I'm pretty sure that's his name, Lucid, either way, um, and... That was the, uh, if anyone remembers his Dominions for Ormer videos, that was what brought me in and wanted me to play these. For the longest time, I just watched videos, I watched videos, and eventually I got around to buying Dominions 4, and I played single player. I never played online. Um, after a long time, um, I'm talking a couple years in, uh, I, mean, I, kept, I continued to watch the videos into Dominions 5, and um, uh, one day I, just, I saw the game on sale, and I was like, okay, I'll buy it. And uh, that was that was probably about a year ago now, I think, by the time I bought it. It might be close to a year, maybe not. Um, I actually don't even think it's been a year, but there's a possibility it has, that it has. But either way, that has that's what, that, that's what brought me into this game. And um, I think it's uh, very, very interesting. Of course, Lucid has done another video since then, a Dominions 5 or more. Um, I have seen it. I, I've enjoyed watching it. I'll probably leave a link down below for it. He has some very, very good ideas for it. But I, I just play them a whole lot differently than he does. Um, as far as the bless, the scales, everything like that. And I've I've played three games as Ermor, Um And I've won twice. And these are multiplayer games. These aren't noob games. These are regular games. And I have won twice. I'm um, against some pretty good players. Uh, I did lose one time, even though I was like, that one was robbed from me. I felt like that could have ended differently if I was closer to uh, the Thrones when they were going for him. Because uh, they just weren't around me. Um, but either way, I hope you guys really enjoy this, and we'll go ahead and get into it. I have a lot of stuff written out for this nation. And so let's go ahead and go over to the Pretenders. And you see here, there's nothing. So very, very interesting. <laughs> So, race undead, you get a lot of free spawn, they don't need supplies, they can walk in the water, most of them can, your sacreds can't, are unbreakable and walk day and night, do not recruit regular armies, but summons and reanimates armies. Now, it says that, but at the same time, you are able to recruit indies, and uh, usually enough, there are some indies that you actually need, okay? Um, you have undead legionaries, this is like, uh, basically the undead version of Ermor uh, in the EA age. Um, Wailing Ladies, Unholy Knights, Hordes of Newly Undead, um, Death, Fire, Astral, and Elements. Uh, you'll get a few different elements off your randoms, but it's mostly Death. Okay, you're going to be going up Death 3, Death 4, and you'll have a lot of Astral 1s, which is very unfortunate for you. Um, because they'll just magic duel your guys away, and it's sad to watch them go. Um, you have Powerful Priest. All priests can reanimate the undead. That is a very, very key part to this nation here. That means even indie priests that you buy can reanimate undead. Use that tool, guys. If you're going into the late game and you're seeing yourself starting to uh, not stall out, but um, you start spinning your wheels because people have so much more research than you at the point at this point, and um, your armies really aren't able to stack up, and you don't really have enough lictors yet to really just power through, um, definitely recruit indie priests and start um, reanimating. And if not, you can use those indie priests to actually push your dominion. Because your undead priest cannot actually preach, but your alive indie pre preachers can. So that is a very good tool that you can use. So your dominion reanimates the dead, kills population, and senses corpses. Okay, so you're able to tell where corpses are, things like that. But um, as far as your provinces go... You're going to start off with population, of course, and it's going to start dying down really, really quickly. I don't remember the exact numbers for it, but you're automatically at death 3, and your dominion kills it on top of that. I don't know if it's... I just don't remember how much it is per turn. Um, but either way, I mean, you don't want to see it go. At first, uh, if you don't have a castle or anything like that, and I think as long as you have population, it's giving you solace, and it's giving you ghouls. And then if you build a castle... 
Well, any province that doesn't have a castle, that's going to give you just uh, the regular undead skeletons. Not too big of a deal, but if you build a palisade or a castle, you're going to have your Emorian skeletons, which are like the, uh, the legionnaires and stuff like that. And we'll look at a couple of them here in a moment. So uh, it could be, those are definitely worth building castles. You want to, and it also increases the amount of free spawn that you get along with the quality of them. So a really, really good, and having your ghoul, well, soulless really doesn't matter as much. They're definitely on the chaffier side, whereas you want to keep your um, Roman troops and stuff like that just because you don't want to necessarily throw them away. Because, yes, they are chaff, but when most of your nation is chaff and you run out of chaff, you get in trouble, okay? Um, your ghouls, leave them in the castle, guys, unless they are doing, I mean, yes, it's good to take a couple of them, but most of them you're going to use the siege strength in the castle. And uh, since ghouls are not mindless, they do have a mind, of course. Um, they're going to be targeted by things like soul slay. They're going to be targeted by things like um, mind burn, stuff like that. So it is good to bring them. But you don't need a whole lot of them, okay? Um, other than that, I don't have to read that part. That's not the actual god. It was just a test thing. But yeah, very, very interesting. And you notice here, no commanders, no units. Everything that you have is going to be summons. And uh, that's a very, very interesting way to play, and I actually enjoy it. I mean, if you want to read up on them a little bit, here's a little bit about them here. I'm not going to really talk about it all too much. And then we have the Unholy Sepulchre. This is going to be your only site, and it's going to give you nine death gems per turn. And then, of course, since you have a temple in your capital, that's going to push it up to ten, because... Um, with Ermor, they have a special thing for as many temples as they have, depending on how their dominion is, is that for every temple or every dominion, well, hold on, every temple they make gives them one death gem, I believe, up to their dominion score. So if the dominion score is at six and they build six temples, yes, they can get plus six off that, but instead, they cannot go higher for every temple. They'd have to build five temples in order to boost their dominion score up that will give them an extra death gem per turn at that point so very very interesting way to play i don't think it really does it really say it anywhere on here that might not be something that you know i don't see it anywhere but we can test it here in a moment um let's just No, I want them on fire. Hold on. I want to just prove it here. Sorry, I'm a little snotty today, guys. We do have 400 gold. And something that you guys didn't know, you don't have to be a priest level to actually build a temple. You just have to be a sacred commander. Because if we go over here, press on this. Did I send everybody? Oops. Eh, my bad. And you can build a temple. A lot of people don't know that. He doesn't have to be a uh, priest level. He only has to be a sacred commander. So we'll build a temple. And of course we're at plus 10 right now per month. If you look at the bottom. Oh, we're still at 10. Is it every 5? I don't know. Disregard that. <laughs> So strange. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I am right. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know why. I guess it hasn't calculated it yet, maybe? But it does say Def Gems per month. The nation gets one Def Gem per month for each temple. This gem income cannot exceed the Dominion Strength. Oh, it's because our Dominion Strength is one. Because I'm a dummy. <laughs> so it is true. So as long as you don't set your Dominion Strength to one, that's because it was just a test game. I just pressed OK, OK, OK. So it left us at one. And uh, yeah, that's why it's at one still. So if our Dominion Strength was at two, 
we would be making two temp or two def gems per turn since we have two temples. If we push it all the way, say six, seven, eight, or nine, we'd be making that many if we have that many temples. Very, very interesting. I was uh, stumped there for a second. I was like, what? I know this was a thing. I don't know what was going on. But yeah, that is it. That's because my Dominion score is at one, guys. Don't don't believe what I what I said there. Um, so if you do have two temples and your Dominion score is higher than the Dominion score that you've taken um, or have when it shows, I'm going to click here. So it says Dominion Strength of 1. And of course, every five temples increases your Dominion Strength by 1. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, it would be showing that we got 11 Def Gems this turn, not 10. <laughs> So, very, very interesting. And that's really all I have to say about that. We can look here at some of the skeletons that we have. Let me move these guys, fellas, back. Got a lot of ghouls. Just to kind of show you some. <clears throat> and let's see. Start separating them. I think that's everybody. So here we of course have the Long Dead Velite, which is a javelin unit. Very, very useful. They have nice long tower shields, which is a very awesome to have. Decent defense skill because of it. Um, low protection, but that's okay. Then you have your Principe, which is kind of a unit above it as far as uh, seniority. And uh, 12 protection, very nice. 14 defense skill, 8 or 12 defense or attack skill. Um, a javelin, a short sword, which does a lot of damage. A very, very nice unit here. Next, we have a long dead legionary. Now, this is ve basically a velite, but has armor. So, your protection goes up to 10. Not much to talk about. Next, we have the trarii, or trarius. And this is a long spear with a link 4 weapon, 15 pierce damage attack with a protection of 16. But these guys are super slow, so keep that in mind whenever you're scripting them. Um, you might want to put them farther up than others. You might want to put them farther back depending on what you want to do with them. And then you have the Knight of the Unholy Sepulchre. And this is one of your two main sacreds that you have going on. Very, very low hit point pool here, but 17 protection, 13 magical resistance. 13 attack skill, 16 defense skill, and that is without the bless. 23 combat speed. These guys are going to fly. Map movement of 21. And they are sacred, like I said. Pierce resistant, cold resistant, poor amphibian. They can go underwater, along with your other skeletons too, except for ghouls and lictors. Um, poison resistant, undead, inanimate, need not to eat. But they're mindless, so they don't have to be affected by mind burn or mind blast or whatever. Uh, never heals, and they have Spirit Sight, which is also a very, very good tool to have. And they have a Lance, of course, uh, since they're like a heavy calf unit. So they will have that uh, first off Lance hit. And then they have the Broadsword that deals 17 slash damage, and then a Hoof Attack with 13 Blunt. A very, very nice uh, nice unit here as far as calf goes. Um, yes, sure, the hit point pool is kind of sad, but maybe your Bless will help that out a little bit. So very, very interesting. They are fun to have. Um, usually enough, you can either build a bless around these knights, or you can build a bless around lictors. And I tend to turn to lictors. And let's just go ahead, let's cast, let's make a lictor so we can look at them. Everything else will look in modest vector. So, here is a lictor from Ermor. <laughs> So we have a 20 hit point unit, size 2, 16 protection, but you have to remember they do not have a helmet, so they are vulnerable to arrow fire. And it's also something that you could use against them. Magical resistance of 14, morale 20. These guys do have morale, they can break. Of strength of 16, nice. Attack skill 12, defense skill 10. They won't be dodging as much as the knights will. But they have a two-handed battle axe dealing 27 slash damage. That's where a lot of power is coming in. And along with cold resistance, poison resistance, need not to eat, and spirit sight, they have a chill 3 aura. So fighting in a cold 3 temperature scale with a chill 3 aura means they're going to be fatiguing uh, definitely heat 3 players out or fire nations out. They're going to be fatiguing them out for sure if they're in the front line. And then other than that, I mean... Throwing rigor mortar, stuff like that. These these troops become very, very dangerous for people. And they are sacred, so you're able to put a huge bless on them, just like other Ormor. Of course, like Ormor does, because you're going death 3 anyway, your population dying. You don't care about your scales. 
I'm going to show a very, very nice unit here. And we'll talk about blesses and things like that for him when we go into the the uh, nation expansion video, of course. Oh, and we have our ghouls. If anyone's ever seen a ghoul, they do have a poison claw attack that you have to keep in mind that can do some uh, paralyzing poison, which is very, very interesting. So that, since it's fatigue damage, so very cool. Morale 18, these guys can route as well since they're not mindless. Um, other than that, there's not too much to say about them. These are going to be what's sitting inside your forts. That's going to be all for that. Uh, this part. So let's go ahead and switch over to the mod inspector. So guys, I'd like to say one more time that I apologize for being a little snotty today. Um, I had to pause the video and I went and blew my nose and stuff. So looking at this. We see all the national spells of Ermor, which are very, very interesting. We have a lot of stuff going on here. And I believe at first, since we've... Let's talk about the uh, divine spells first and then get into the juicy bits down here. We have an unholy command. An unholy priest, which is an undead priest, commands an enemy undead being to serve him. So uh, they're just going to take control of undead if there's any around. Um, unholy protection. Um, what this is, is going to be a magic resistance buff, so it's going to increase the magical resistance of undead, which is very, very useful due to the fact of things like banishment and stuff like that can be, uh, can be countered by magical resistance. Go ahead and get rid of those two. Unholy Blessing, of course, this is exactly what it says. It's going to bless your undead troops, um, or unholy troops, however you want to say it, but this is going to be your undead troops, of course. And this is just like a regular blessing, but for the undead version. We have unholy power, which is very, very interesting. So with this prayer, a unholy priest can grant extra speed and attack skill to a small number of undead beings. Very, very interesting here. And this is not just for um, sacreds, of course. This is for all your undead. So very, very useful spell here. Just making your troops stronger. This is a larger AoE of unholy... Uh, protection of the first version of it this is just it's just going to hit more at one time and it's the same thing just a magical resistance buff we have a larger version of unholy blessing here being the priest level 2 version just like how this was a priest level 2 and then we get into these very very strong priest level 3 spells and i'll go ahead and bring all of them up i kind of went through those first ones fast because there's not really too much to talk about them So, actually, I should have switched those out. Hold on. Hold on. So, here we have Unholy Power, but this is going to be the Priest Level 3 version. It's casting time 100, so it's a regular casting effect. Um, now, this one doesn't do anything. This is going to be your largest Unholy Power one as far as Level 3 goes, so this is going to be the easiest one for you to get to. Um, but, it does cover a decent amount, so we won't talk about this too much. There's another version of this still. You have Unholy Blessing, which is your Divine Blessing. So this is going to hit 100% of your Sacreds on the battlefield. Very, very useful. You want to be casting this at the start of every battle, of course. Um, next, you have Protection of the Sepulcher. This is area effect 100% of the battlefield. This gives everyone the magical resistance buff. You want to be casting this after you cast Unholy Blessing, of course. And then on top of that, lastly, we do have a Holy 4 spell to cast. And this is an Unholy Power version of... Uh, or combat level of divine four so what this is going to do this is a hundred percent of the battlefield everyone's going to get the bonus to it of the attack skill and the uh movement speed of course so you guys are going to get faster and they're going to hit more often so very very nice to have um but that divine four is tough to come by you're going to have to um, profit you have to turn a holy three into a profit to get him up to uh four so, not too often you'll be casting that in many battles, just mainly your main ones, whatever your main, like, doom stacks coming through. So, first here we do have Revive Lictor. This requires Path of Two Death, and it requires three gems. And this is how you get your Lictors, guys. Um, very, very interesting that you have to summon all these Sacreds. Um... And you say, okay, well, you get one lictor for three gems. That's not very good. Um, 
So you have an item that's only for your nation, and we'll go over to the item tab. And I've already set it up, and you have a black laurel. Okay, so this is a death, no, this is a construction 2 item. It requires 10 death gems in the, the paths of death 2 to make it. So you're able to make it fairly easily. And uh, what it does, whenever you revive lictors, you get an additional 2 lictors to it. So very, very useful item here. So keep that in mind. Let's t go back over to the spell tab. So every time you cast revive lictor for 3 gems, Instead of getting one effect, you'll get three effects. So that turns every lictor into one, or it turns every death gem into one lictor. Um, so very, very uh, good uh, ratio going on there. A uh, one-to-one -one ratio, of course. And uh, these guys are very powerful. You're able to uh, produ produce them out very quickly at that point. Um, and a lot of people say, okay, well, you can do the Black Laurel uh, production of lictors in a way, or you can do your holy three that, or your archbishops and I'll bring him up this is a 23 uh, death gem summon that you have and you have you get a holy three from it okay so these guys are reanim are able to reanimate one lictor per turn um, so I did the math on it um, you can do the black laurels or you could do archbishop summoning either one is up to you but by the time um, or it gets to around turn 40 is when the Archbishop summoning overcomes the Black Laurel summoning. So you're able to make more lictors faster. You're able to make more of them. And at that point, they're ca they'll cost less than one gem per lictor. So uh, it's a very interesting way to think about it, But you're not able to make the lictors nowhere near as fast as you're able to do it with a Black Laurel and a Spectre. So... Keep that in mind. Usually enough, I do do Black Laurel Summoning for the most most of the game. Um, not until it comes to late game, and I'm actually able to make lots of Archbishops uh, freely. I have a lot. I have a very large death income, and I'm not worried about being rushed. Since at that point, we're so late into the game, I've more than likely already killed two people, um, and uh, I just don't need to be using that many death gems on Lictors at that point. Not saying that you don't need them. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely need them. You, there's no point you want to stop making them, but having that many archbishops back up, um, if you lose some holy threes, you can send another one out. A whole bunch of stuff going on there, uh, logistics-wise. Um, so keep that in mind. I do transition over to archbishops, but that's not till late in the game anyway. But if you start from turn one, it usually takes about 30 to 40 turns before you uh, to really get a decent amount of lictors coming out of those archbishops when they're paying for themselves. It's a very, very interesting thing to think of. So next, we can look at the Spectre, which is the other summon. This is going to be one of your researchers, of course. He costs 12 death gems. This is what he looks like. He does have a Fear Ore, which is kind of interesting here, but he is a Death 2 Mage with 9 research points. So very, very interesting. 25 hit point pool. Um, he is Ethereal. Yeah, he's ethereal, so that's very, very nice. But really, all you want this guy for is researching or site searching. That's really about it. So we'll go ahead and close these tabs out here. And we will bring up a few more. So we've already gone over Lictor. So we'll look at the sensor here. This costs one more Def Gem, but instead of getting a Lictor, you get a Lictor Commander. So pretty decent. He has 120 leadership. Not too bad. He'll be able to take a decent amount of undead along with him. And this basically is just another sacred commander that you have that will lead other sacreds. But normally enough, if you have a large army going through, like this might be leading regular undead, whereas the archbishop, will bring him back up actually, will be leading your lictors and stuff like that with 160 undead leadership. Let's close all these. So, not too much to talk about the sensor there. So, we'll look at the Acolyte. I honestly don't like the Acolyte. 10 Death Gems, you get a Holy One that's able to reanimate. Not really for me, okay? Um, I, I'd much rather build Indie Priest to reanimate instead of spending 10 Death Gems. Because the Death Gems, are, you're going to be starving for them. You definitely want a lot of other things going on. Or you definitely want them for a lot of other things. And the Acolyte just isn't it. 
Some people might argue it, but it is what it is. And then here, same thing with the last one. The bishop is just a holy two. Um, there's really no reason to need a holy two. They don't cast great spells for you. They don't cast a holy three spells. They can't cast unholy blessing. They cannot really summon much of anything. I mean, there's nothing they can summon. Yes, they can reanimate, but they're not reanimating lictors because only a holy three can reanimate a lictor. So really no need for them. I really don't like these guys here either. And of course, we are talking about Archbishop, which is great. Definitely need some. But uh, we'll start going through the other ones. So you have a Dusk Elder here. This is going to be a 20 gem mage. And this is where you get your Astral Fire Death from. Um, very interesting here. You could kind of thug these out, but you really don't need to. I'd rather have them sneaking around with armies. Um, a lot more research points per turn. And look at all the randoms that they get here. So this makes it so a lot of them really don't get anything good. I mean, actual true wouldn't be a, wouldn't be bad. You definitely want to go up to a death four for sure. Um, fire two, eh. earth one, water one, uh, air one wouldn't be bad actually. So you'd be able to cast some decent things with that. But the rest of water, well, water you can do sticking in rains. So that's that's kind of good. I think you can do sticking in rains. Earth, eh, not too much going on. Fire, not too much going on. But definitely, uh, death air and water would be decent paths to take because with rigor mortis being a level four to cast and you need like three or four gems you're not able to put an extra gem on that spell to cast it so you have to be that level of a spell so quite interesting there wailing ladies very interesting unit i wouldn't say it's used too often i like bringing the picture to the middle of the screen um but they do have a whale which is a very very interesting ability here um, so, cannot be used for repelling, okay, causes fear on hit, it's not saying it here, it says damage special, but either way, I can't remember exactly, but it's going to deal like 999 damage, so it's going to pretty much kill anything, but, um, you don't get many, they're, they're very expensive, um, they're very, they're used for very particular things, and usually enough you won't need them, but they are a tool that you do have, if you do need them. We have the Lictorian Guard. This gives you 5 Lictors for 10, but with a Laurel, it gives you 7 Lictors for 10. But still, it's not a 1 to 1 ratio, so I wouldn't use it because you'll get much more value out of just doing Revive Lictor with a Laurel. We have Lamination here, and this gives us 5 Wailing Ladies for 25 Death Gems. So 5 for 5 instead of 1 for 8 it gets better, of course, if you need them. This is 14 for 33. Eh, still wouldn't use it. And this is so high in Conjuration, I doubt you'll be going that high. You have a Lictorian Legion. So, 35 for 25 Lictors. Still not a 1 to 1 ratio, so not worth it. You have an Amorian Legion. 15 Death Gems for Legionaries. No, I wouldn't use this either. And then for some reason, you have Pride of Lions here. Definitely great spell. Use it, use it all the time. I'm kidding. But, uh, yeah, weird. So that's really all I have to say about this, uh, this part here, guys. Let me switch back over to the game. Um, so that's really all I have to say about the beginning part here. Um, I have a lot more to talk about in the expansion. Um, as far as your turns go, and as far as how I like the build nation, since I said something about it earlier, how... Lucid does his one way, and I like to do mine a different way. Not saying his way is bad. His way is still good. He still wins games. That's not important. But um, but I like to go Sloth 3, Turmoil 3, Drain 3, Misfortune 3. I take everything down. Okay, and so we have the biggest bless that we're able to have. And even then, I sat here and done the math on it. I read out what I wrote down. Um, so, turn one, you set your, you, so, in total, to get construction to it, you need 150 research points. So, on turn one, your specter will research, your sensor will patrol, turn two, you'll summon a specter with your one, so you have zero research points on that turn. So, turn three, you'll summon a third look or specter, and then you'll research with the other one for six research points. On turn four, you summon another specter. Um, and you have the other two researching, which gives you uh, 12 per turn research points. 
I'm um, not too bad. In total, you're only up to 24 research points, but that's okay. We'll get there. Um, turn five, we summon the fifth specter, having the other three researching. So that puts us to a total of 42 research points. And remember, we're trying to hit that 150. Um, turn six, we are summoning our last specter that we want to summon while having the other four specters researching that gives us a total of 66 research points at that point 24 per turn but 66 in total on turn seven we're doing the same thing but with every specter at this point we're not summoning anymore we're going to start sandbagging our death gems um, we hit 36 research points per turn leaving us at 102 at that point so turn eight we're going to research again bringing us up to 138 and that's going to leave us 12 research points off so on turn nine, we're gonna hit. Um, we're gonna have the last bit left. Uh, we're gonna definitely go over it a little bit. Make sure you know what you're researching after that. So that's gonna put us at a total of 174 research points in drain three, which will get us to construction two. So on turn ten, you've sandbagged I think around 40 death gems if you stopped summoning around turn six. Um, so very good. At that point, you'll make three black laurels that will cost you 30 death gems, and you send out the or your other three specters out to site search, okay? So this is going to set you up for summoning nine lictors on turn 11, and then nine more on turn 12, while also having your god come out on turn 12, because I like taking a dormant god. Don't take him prison. I don't particularly like awake, um, especially for Ermor, because you're not going to be coalition on the first turn, you know? You're not going to be coalition until everyone's expansion's done, and that's usually not until turn 12. And even if they start attacking you before turn 12, your legionary should be able to deal with whatever they're attacking you with, depending on what it is. I mean, if it's a hell bless sacred, you won't be able to, but your lictors will be able to once you get up turn 12. Even if they're sitting on your cap, you're still able to summon. So very, very interesting thing to think about there. Um, so keep that in mind. But yeah, I do like having the research getting done and me starting to produce lictors at the same time that my god comes out. And honestly enough, my god is probably going to cast either a Dusk Elder first or a Archbishop, depending. So either the Dusk Elder can either spend time summoning an Archbishop or um, you can just have that Holy Three ready to go. Um, it's up to you. So usually, I think, usually enough, I'll go Dusk Elder into... Uh, Archbishop just for the fact that I can don't have to waste more turns on summoning with my god because your god's going to be your strongest part of your research core um, usually enough it's at like 70 some or 80 research points per turn so you definitely want him researching as much as he can so that's that's, a, that's about all I have for the first 12 turns there uh, usually enough you expand very very well with your undead as well and they can also go underwater just not the lictors or sensors. So keep that in mind, guys. I hope you have a good one and watch out for the expansion video. Uh, should be coming out either today or tomorrow. Um, so I'll see you later. Bye.